Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. And today's topic is, what is 5D quantum awareness and how do we reach, reach the uh, 5D quantum awareness? As always, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a meditation. And we're going to um, keep it as simple as possible. You're all familiar with the work. Those of you who are new and here for the first time, uh, we generally mute um, everybody's... Uh, we have to mute everyone is because devices start making noises and sometimes there's background noise from uh, each participant and that's going to affect our broadcast. So for now, we're muting everybody. And later on, after the meditation, I do a talk. Uh, you're welcome to raise your hand if I see you on the camera, and then I'll unmute you, or you can write on the chat box, and uh, I'll answer your question. Let's uh, take a deep breath, relax, settle and keep things um, as effortless as possible without really trying to make anything happen, without really trying to get to anywhere because the goal of the meditation is not to put effort into something as I talked about it last week. Meditation is not an action, it's not something we do. Meditation is something that occurs naturally. So, uh, if I am available and I'm present and I'm here and I can just relax into this moment, what happens is a phenomena takes place and naturally I will be taken from the head to the heart by disengaging from the mind. Meditation will happen automatically. So, all we have to do is simply be available, hang out in the presence, be here now, and disengage yourself from the world of the thoughts. You may ask me, how do I disengage myself from the thoughts? Simply, you can follow your thoughts to the source. Trace back your thoughts to the source of the thoughts and your mind will go into silence. So take a deep breath, turn your attention inwards, bring your attention towards the source of your thoughts the source of yourself and relax into your being here and now here we are together hanging out in this moment without an agenda, trying to get anywhere or do anything. Get that part out of the way. Just hang out in the presence, in this moment, without trying to accomplish anything. Leave that part, which is a Western mentality, accomplishing things, out of the way. Just be available and hang out in this moment without an idea. There is nowhere to go and nothing to do. Just hang out here. Dive into your own natural state, which is being.
we're just hanging out together in this moment without an agenda, without trying to get to anywhere or do anything. We're simply in a state of meditation without an agenda. Let meditation happen on its own. Don't force anything.
slowly, slowly come back. There is nothing to say, nothing to do, and nowhere to go. I'll say this again one more time. <clears throat> nothing I say or you say Nothing you do or anywhere you go, there's nowhere to go, nothing to do. You cannot do anything not to be God. Regardless of how you feel and how you may feel disconnected and have this urge of becoming one with God, it doesn't matter how strong is your desire and how hard you're trying and what kind of jumping jacks you're doing. You are already God and you can't be anything else. This is what Papaji told me a long time ago. This is what Ramana Maharishi told Papaji. And now I realize it, that that's how it is. You are who you're looking for. But in a way, it's easy to say this. Then really recognizing it in a way that there is this sense of separation that you are in control of your life and you are the author of your you have this authorship of your own life and you're the one who's choosing things you're deciding what to do where to go you make mistakes or you accomplish things and they all have a sense that you are the one who's doing it. Which is a false notion. It's not true. At all. It feels like it. It looks like it. It seems like it. But it's not. It's false. So... We talk about the 5D quantum awareness of what is fifth dimensional quantum awareness and what is it, how do we reach this level of awareness? Um, what is it going to do for me or for you? How is it going to affect your life? So and we're going to get into that. And I will going to dissect it and I will explain it to you to the best of my ability. The 5D quantum awareness is reaching, arriving at a level of understanding um, that this false notion of separation, this really sense that each and every human being as they're born uh, they develop this sense that we are making our own decisions and we're in control of our, our own life and uh, therefore we make mistakes there's regrets I could have gone this way versus that way I could have done this 
Um, I should have done this. Uh, I'm a bad person. I'm a bad mom. I left my kids and I ran away with some other guy and I abandoned my family or I have been abandoned. My parents abandoned me or they abused me or whatever. Whatever is the story. Um, the, as you are developing and you're expanding your mind or you're going beyond the world of the mind. It's another word, another way of saying it. So there's an expansion happening. So rather than being super concentrated and super focused on one point and which basically this concentration uh, results in being really focused on a s separate entity, being focused on this part that you're actually somebody capable of doing things on her or his own, separated from totality. It's a feeling you have. And as you're expanding, you're opening up through meditation, through various type of practices, spiritual work, is what happens is this laser focus that you have on being somebody, a separated entity, an individual, you know, it's like you are this, this person. And this person is kind of hovering around on its own and it's independent and is making its own decision this this one is as you're expanding you're opening up you begin to realize that this single entity doesn't exist as a separate being as a separate person that your existence that is very important and is very ba much focused based on an individual is a false per perception. It's, it's not existing. And that's a big blow at the mind. Because the mind cannot accept this. The mind will not uh, grog. It won't digest it. It's like what? Because the thought comes. Naturally, this thought comes from everybody. I had this thought. It, the thought comes and says, what do you mean I don't exist? What do you mean I am one with God and with everything? I have power. I can decide what to do. I can, you know, lift my arm. You know, I'm doing this right now. I decide on doing this. It's my choice. I decided to come to this webinar today. I cleared my schedule to be here today. Um, I pay my bills. I take my kids to school. I go to work every day. I clean my house, I do my hair, I shave my face, I do this, I do that. What do you mean that I, I don't do it? This is like BS. It doesn't make any sense that I'm not the one who's lifting this pen. I'm not the one who's lifting my arm. So... It doesn't make sense to the average spiritual seeker. But as we do the work and we start expanding, the awareness starts to expand and loses its focus, not being so much focused on one entity, one unit. This is a unit. As the focus starts to, you know, not being like this really focused on concentrated on one person and the expansion starts to take 
place, then what happens is, uh, in a way we can say, your vibration starts to rise. You're rising, elevating to a higher consciousness. Elevating, expanding. I'm using different words, okay? I'm going to use different words to see which one you resonate with. Because I may be saying that your vibrations are rising to a higher frequency and it may confuse you. Or well, some of you may connect with it, some of you may not connect. Or I may just use the words like your awareness is expanding. It's an expansion in your awareness. And so you may be resonating with that instead of uh, raising your vibrations. So I'm just going to use different kind of words and see which one you resonate with and which one you're, you're, it clicks for you, which one makes sense for you. But don't really get caught into the words because the words are pointers. And I'm trying to point things out, uh, point, point things out to you. So the idea is every spiritual seeker, all of us that come on this path and we get pulled on this path and we're going towards the light or we're going towards liberation, we're going towards freedom. The idea, the ultimate idea is not God realization, not becoming one with God, not enlightenment uh, or any of these words. These are just words and they're meaningless. They don't mean anything. They're just big fancy words. They mean nothing. Okay? Ultimately, at the end of the day, we all want one thing. Everybody on this planet wants one thing. Anybody? Any volunteers? Anyone have an idea what that thing is? Yes. Yeah, Hilda, what is it? What, what do we all want? Peace of mind. Peace of mind, exactly. But what does peace of mind do for you? Freedom. Yeah, and then freedom translates to what? Silence. Well, again, these are words. They mm -hmm. sound really, they sound good. But what is it at the end of the day I want? I want to be happy. Happiness, satisfaction. We can call it freedom. You can call it self-realization, God-realization. Whatever word you want to add to this. So they're meaningless, really. At the end of the day, I want to be happy. The rest, I don't give a damn. I don't care. I want to be happy. I want to be satisfied. I want to be... Hi, Karen. Are you trying to get my attention? Karen, are you on? I can't disconnect you. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm sorry. It's my sister's daughter outside, so I'm just wa waving. Oh, I sorry. thought you were waving mm. at me. Okay. Mm. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's all right, hon. No problem. So, ultimately, this is what you want. So, keep your attention. Just keep it very simple on your spiritual work. So you don't get confused and you don't get caught into a lot of fancy words and then forget about your main goal and not you're deviating and going in a different direction. Ultimately, you want to be happy. So, and then to be happy means what? What does happiness mean? 
I want to be happy. Okay? Well, how do I define happiness? What is happiness? Basically, happiness is when I get what I want. As long as I get what I want, as long as everything goes my way, as long as other people do what I want them to do, I'm happy. As long as existence bends and things go in my direction, I'm happy. So I, I come to my studio this morning to set things up. The lighting's not really working, so the uh, because it's a sophisticated lighting system and you can increase and decrease the percentage of the lights and something has messed it up. So Amir and I were uh, trying to fix things and and uh, uh, we did our best to put things together. Then I'm also broadcasting with my cell phones. I have two extra cell phones. One is broadcasting YouTube, the other one, I mean Facebook, the other one is doing Instagram. And my cell phone that I use for Facebook would not give me a channel to do a live broadcast on Facebook. I don't know why. The phone decided it didn't want to do it. So I'm trying to fix that. And of course, we're running out of time because I want to start at 10 in the morning. And I'm getting frustrated trying to get these devices working. Uh, then our internet wasn't working very well. So I couldn't, I had to reboot everything. So I wasn't very happy. I was starting to stressing and not being too happy about things are not going my way. That's a very basic, simple, human way of being. I'm happy when things go my way. I'm happy when people say yes to me. I'm happy when I get what I want. But the rest of the time when I'm not getting what I want and things don't go my way, whatever it is, maybe in the world scale or whatever, then I'm not happy. So happiness is basically what we're looking for. Now what happens on the spiritual path is somehow existence starts to pull the plug on you and things don't really go your way. And as things don't go your way, most of the time, most of us on this spiritual path had to go through a period of shock treatment. Means things start to fall apart in your life, so you get shocked, maybe you lose your job, you lose your home, maybe your partner leaves you, maybe somebody dies in your family, maybe you had a bad accident and you had to go through big recovery, you know, some sort of shock takes place and it forces you to wake up into the nature of the reality because things aren't going your way. And as you get shocked, you go through a period of shock treatment and it, or your body may be malfunctioning and is not doing what it used to do. And uh, so you come to this point of questioning things because you're not happy anymore. And that dissatisfaction, lack of happiness, forces you to question the nature of reality and you get pulled into this path and you start to just look for things. Look for a deeper meaning of life. Somehow finding out some answers that make sense because things aren't going your way. So in the beginning, you're trying to figure out a way to manipulate things so maybe things go your way. So as a result of that, you may be taking some courses or classes that 
teaching you how to manifest your own reality, how to manipulate life so things go your way. And so then you could be happy. So keep this thing right on the focal, focal point of your attention, is that ultimately you want to be happy. That's the ultimate. You may just come and tell me, well, I really want world peace. Well, I really want the world to be in harmony and I'm fighting for that. Well, why do you want world peace? What does world peace do for you? Because it makes you happy. It makes you feel like you got what you wanted. So just keep things very simple on the spiritual path and always come back to the point. What is the point is you. You want to be happy. That's what you want. And in some ways, we'll do whatever we have to do to get it. So, now, I'm bringing this up because I want to, A, be clear about this part, that that's the main goal of every, every spiritual seeker. The words freedom, silence, the ultimate oneness, they all sounds great. They're wonderful. But I would keep it simple. We keep it at one point. You want to be happy. And that's not like you're asking for a lot. I mean, it's not something wrong asking to be happy. I want to be happy too. Everybody wants to be happy. What is my definition of happiness? Maybe someone gets happy by killing other people. Maybe that's how they get happy. Maybe someone gets happy by raping people. Maybe somebody gets happy by helping people. Maybe someone defines happiness by writing books or accomplishing things or inventing things uh, or just being a mom or being a dad. Uh, you know, everybody's way and per perception of happiness is different. What's happiness to me may not be happiness to the person next to me, but ultimately that's what we want. All right, so now what does this have to do with 5D quantum awareness? The 5D quantum awareness, what I'm referring to and how it brings you happiness is by an expansion of opening from being super focused on one single thing, which is me, to opening up, expanding my mind, and recognizing that I'm not just limited. My existence is not simply limited to one person, to one unit. It's more than that. And in this expansion, as I'm working on myself or for some reason I'm starting to realize life and realize things with the right training, right guidance, then you begin to tap into a greater part of yourself, an expanded part of yourself. Could you be more than what you think you are? Is it possible? Am I only limited to this? Am I, could I be more than just this body, this mind with this desires, with the story of this life I have? Am I just this? Or could I, is it possible that I'm more than that? And in this question, that I'm questioning it and I'm examining it and I'm starting to expand 
because I'm looking at a greater part, a bigger part of myself, more than what it seems to be. And I'm open to it. So, I'm opening up, expanding, looking, being available. In this availability, things start to happen. I'm starting to recognize that, wait a minute, there is an energy field. There is something that I'm tabbing into. There is some sort of order in existence. Things are not chaotic. Things are not just happening based on accident, but something. There is an intelligence, something which is of value here, something powerful. And then my attention starts to go to it. You want to call it God. You want to call it intelligence, spirit. Something is here. Something's thinking. Something's operating. Something's very careful. Have you ever thought that what powers planet Earth to rotate around itself? What powers it? How does that happen? What makes planet Earth turn around itself? Where does it get its power? Where is the source of it? And what makes it go around the sun? How does this happen? What power is that? And what power is these other planets to turn around themselves? And turning around the sun and none of them collide with each other or one of them stop turning around itself. Well, who's doing this? Who's in control of this? What makes you fall asleep at night and what makes you wake up in the morning? What intelligence is there that is operating all these systems in your body when you're asleep? You're certainly not in control of them at any moment. You're not in control of your nervous system. You're not in control of your digestion. You're not in control of your hormones. So what's operating these things? How is this happening? There has to be an intelligence here, something which knows, something which is aware, something is beyond my understanding because I'm so focused on my own affairs. You know, we're so focused and tied up into this being, this person, and my needs all day long. I'm trying to satisfy my needs. And I understand if you have kids, then you are also serving your children or your partner. So, and you're, you are catering to their needs. Dad, I need this. Dad, I need that. Dad, I need to get to school. Dad, I don't have my books. Dad, I don't have my shoes, my clothes. Mom, get me this. Mom, I'm hungry. Mom, where's my sandwich? Mom, my clothes aren't washed. So, but basically that's as far as you can. Let's say you're very responsible. You're very successful. Okay. You're taking care of your kids. You're taking care of your partner, your household, and you're running a business. 
This is as far as you can go. You can't go any further. You cannot go take care of another family with their kids and their work, let alone 10 families or a thousand families. Can you? Can you handle that? Look how concentrated you are of just taking care of yourself from getting up in the morning, washing yourself, decorating yourself, making yourself clean, making yourself presentable, taking care of your house, going shopping, doing your laundry, paying your bills, cleaning your home. I mean, just look how much maintenance work, how much of your time goes into physical maintenance, then your environment that you live in. How much of your time is taken? And then on top of that, most of us have to make a living. Now you have to make money too in order to maintain the systems to be operating. And that's a lot of work too. So how much of your time goes into making a living? Those of you who work for a living, takes a lot of your time and energy. So how much time are you going to have at the end of the day to dedicate to anything else or to operating the world or being in control of things? No, it's very clear. There is something, if you expand your awareness and you're open and you're looking at it, it's very clear something much bigger than you bigger than me is operating existence. And when I talk about 5D quantum awareness and how to reach it is to tap into this understanding, tap into this awareness. So what happens as you're expanding, you're opening up and you begin to realize that this awareness, this expansion, this intelligence is the same intelligence that is in re it's responsible for your well-being. It takes care of you. It's actually, it's this intelligence is paying the bills. It's connecting things for you. It's the same intelligence that powers you to get up in the morning and walk. It powers you to be able to use your body. It powers you to be able to speak. It powers you to think to operate and also when you're creative and let's say you're writing a book, you're doing any kind of arts, you're playing music, this intelligence is the one that comes through you and brrr, take care of things. So the more we become aware of this intelligence, because it's all over us. It's, it, we're, we're in it. We're a part of it. The more you become aware of it, means what? Means the less you're so focused and so s being stuck, because we're stuck in a way of being so focused on, a, on an individual entity, a unit, which is independent. This idea that this unit is independent and it's got its own authority and it's got its own sovereignty and it's doing its own thing. So as you're starting, your, your awareness starts to expand and you're starting to become aware that this unit is not independent. It doesn't do things on its own. It's doing and its operation is based on the whole. 
the vastness, this awareness is what is operating through the unit. So in 5D quantum awareness means you're rising your vibrations to a higher frequency. You're expanding. It's opening from being like this. It starts to... Being like this means you're so focused on an individual. You're so stuck into this idea that you are separated and you're the one who's making decisions. And it's your fault because you made a mistake or it's your well-doing because you succeeded. You're so stuck there. Until you start to expand and raise, op expanding your mind, expanding your possibility, you're open, you're opening up to other possibilities, to the whole, to the expansion to the intelligence. You're willing at this point to let go of a one way of thinking to a possibility that there is a lot more than what you thought, what you've been told, what you've been taught. It's a lot more than that. And in that openness, you begin to get a glimpse of a much bigger part of yourself. And as a result of getting an idea that you're a lot more than what you thought you were, then information starts to come, wisdom starts to come, because, because you're getting access to the library of the Alexandria. You're getting access to the internet, universal internet, where information is there. Because you're not so focused and so closed-minded that you're the only thing there is as an individual. And everything is just about that. So the 5D quantum awareness is an expanded awareness. It's a way of being. You still have your life. You still have the same body. You're still living. You're still eating. You still have your family. You still have to go to work. I'm not saying like all of a sudden as you're reaching this higher dimension, this expanded awareness that you disappear or your family disappears or your home disappears. No, it's what changes is your perception changes. You are beginning to see, experience and get a feel of a bigger part of yourself, a higher part of yourself. And in that, the experience, it could be a lot smoother. And as the understanding increases, then you may, you probably will begin to see that in this re realization of the 5D quantum awareness, in this understanding then what was making you unhappy what created this idea of happiness that happiness is based on getting what I want and everything's going my way it starts to change an expansion happens and the way it changes is that you begin to develop a sort of an attitude of losing, you know, you're expanding, right? In this expansion, as this expansion starts to happen, is also in the meantime, you begin to lose 
this sense of preference that I prefer things to be this way. It must be this way. And as you start losing that, it's like you're okay if things go this way too. So your personal preference or being stuck into something to be one way begins to dissolve into you are fine if things don't go your way. Things, whichever direction they go, you are perfectly okay with it. So if things go my way, I'm very happy, and if things don't go my way, I'm still very okay with it. Because they're all decided by one intelligence. All of it is decided by that intelligence that's making the planet turn around itself. If that intelligence has the know-how of making a planet turn around itself and make my body function and that intelligence been around for trillions of people coming to life and going and it's been directing this is it fair to think and believe that that intelligence knows more than one person called Zarathustra? Or I come and say, life sucks, life is horrible, all these horrible things happening all the time, and I know better. It shouldn't be this way, it should be that way. So, Look at it this way. How would life be for you? Okay, we're just going to come back to you again. What is life like if you don't really have an attachment on your preferences? You don't really prefer one thing to go this way or that way. You're okay with whichever direction things go. Can you suffer then? If you're not stuck and you're not set on things to be in a certain way, can you suffer after that? Would suffering be possible for you? Or you're only suffering when things, you suffer when things don't go your way, when you don't get what you want and what you think you deserve or how something should be and you don't get it then we throw a fit like a kid we throw a tantrum because we didn't get what we wanted existence screwed up existence not fair enough but as your awareness rising your your consciousness is shifting and you get to see the big picture and then you see, oh wow, okay, this didn't go my way because existence knows exactly what I need and I'm okay with it. Then you all of a sudden may find yourself happy all, all of your life. Because you shifted, you didn't change the world. You didn't change the president of the US. You didn't change the climate. You didn't destroy the uh, corporations that are polluting the water, the air. You didn't find a cure for cancer. You didn't find a cure for the pandemic. You didn't do anything externally in the world. You just shifted something inside yourself and all of a sudden you're happy. 
without changing anything in the world. You're not making more money. You don't look younger. You didn't lose weight. You didn't find a lover, your soulmate, but you're happy. Nothing changed in the external world. But everything's changed in your inner world by shifting your awareness to a higher frequency, to a, a higher dimension. And what was that? You don't have preference. You don't prefer this over that. You're okay with all of it. And all of a sudden life changes. And you're happy. You're not angry anymore. You're not trying to fight for this and fight for that. One, one thing changed. It's your perception. And if you, Grog, you understand, you see that that simple perception has caused a lot of misery in your life. Acceptance of what is, being surrendered to what life provides versus having an idea of how life should be and how things should be. There's a big difference. Okay, so I'll take, if you have any questions, anybody wants to ask me. Any questions, you can either write it in the chat box or wave at me and I'll unmute you. Now, when we start to open up, and again, these are words, okay? So let's not get really caught up on, uh, on the words because it could be deceiving and it can throw you off of your rhythm when uh, you get very attached to words. So, and I don't want that. But I'm just going to continue this discussion and talk about this. But uh, again, don't hang on to the word. Use the word as a pointer, but don't get caught up with it. So, we're doing this work. I'm working on myself. I want freedom, means I want happiness, and I want oneness with God, with, with existence. Uh, I want final self-realization. So I'm doing the work, and I'm doing the work, I'm starting to expand. In this expansion, it's kind of like this illusion, this idea of Zarathustra as a separate person. It starts to dissolve. The idea that I have about myself, it starts to kind of fade away. And in this transaction, as I'm kind of fading away, what happens is it's opening up. This thing is opening up. So the idea of me being separated is going, it's dissolving. And in this opening up, it appears to be like the energy is coming in. More energy comes in. And, and an expansion is like my heart is opening up. I'm starting to feel, I'm not thinking so much. I'm feeling and in this, I can start to feel like there is comfort, there is like acceptance, there is love, something. You, you know, the word love is overused, but there is this presence, there is this being 
something is surrounding me. It's coming from within me, it's around me, and it's taking care of things. Something's very connected, something knows everything. So in the beginning, uh, you're entering into this heart space, this place. It may be a little bit confusing, it may be exciting, it may scare you a little bit, because you may feel like you're going to lose control, but as it's taking over, there's also this understanding comes in that, wait a minute, I'm starting to see like things are really falling into places. And there's like a natural order to this. I didn't know about that. I thought I have to be in control of everything. I didn't know I can let go. And things still take care of themselves. I didn't know if I let go, still the planet is going to turn around itself. I don't have to make things happen. Something else is doing it. And in that, I feel energetic because I'm becoming a channel. I'm getting out of the way and more energy is coming. And as more energy is coming, I start knowing things. I start being a lot more awake and aware. Or maybe I become, I feel a healing energy. Maybe I'm getting more psychic. Maybe I can, de I develop telepathic communication with other human beings or with the animals. Maybe I'm becoming an empath. Uh, I develop becoming clairsentient, claircognizant, or clairaudient, clairvoyant. So in this expansion, the expansion is happening. Things start to appear. Things start to be available. Information is coming. an expansion or we can say you're raising your vibrations to a higher frequency and as you're rising your vibrations to this 5d quantum awareness frequency is in a way you feel like you're untouchable here everything was real here in this frequency the world is real, the world is mean, the world is not fair, there is mean people there, there is war, there is all kinds of things happening and uh, there is fighting for human rights and these people come and destroy the, the, the forest, they are killing all these animals, they are polluting the water, they are polluting the air. I am very angry about these things. I get very passionate and very upset that life is so unfair and existence doesn't know what it's doing. Existence doesn't know what it's doing. I know the right way. I've only been around here for a few years, but I know more than existence. So as I'm expanding and opening, opening up, starting to trust existence and saying, okay, maybe this existence knows why it's killing so many animals or destroying the forests. Didn't the same existence create these forests? Didn't the same existent who's making the planet run around itself, uh, uh, turn around itself, create these animals? Created the earth, supporting life on the planet, and now it's destroying them? Maybe it knows what it's doing. Maybe there is a, a greater wisdom to it than my limited wisdom because mine is really starting to see it when you're expanding you're starting to realize that wait a minute I don't really know much and in that expansion means you're rising your 
your vibrations to a higher frequency, I'm coming to this other level. Here, all this destruction is happening, and I'm rising my vibrations to a higher frequency. The destruction is still there. Killing the animals, destroying the forest, uh, polluting the water, polluting the air, all these things are here, but now I am above it. So from here, I can see what's going on there, but I'm not touched. All of a sudden, where I am, the air is clean, the water is clean, nothing is happening, no one's dying, no one's getting killed. Because I shifted, I went into this other frequency. I changed channel. In the new frequency that I've arrived, there is harmony within me. I'm not being triggered by these things. I start to see there is order in life. I start to see that this intelligence knows absolutely what it's doing. I start to lose my judgment about it. And I'm starting to accept it and surrender to it. And now I find myself really happy because I'm not in a battle. I'm not fighting it anymore. There's an internal peace that's taken and there is a sense of freedom. I'm starting to feel free. And that's what happens when you begin to rise your vibrations to a higher frequency. You're not fighting life. You're not trying to change life. You're accepting life. Doesn't matter what is going on. You're surrendering to what is. You're accepting of what is. And acceptance naturally begin to take place. And in that acceptance, harmony comes. Happiness comes. Does this make any sense to anybody? Are you here with me? Yeah, is everyone hearing what I say? Or you're hypnotized? You're not hypnotized? You're not sleeping? Okay, good. Hi, brother. Hi. A question for you, uh, please. Uh, turn this up. Sorry, Susan. Um, I understand absolutely what you're saying. I uh, experience quite a lot of what you're saying, but I dip in and out of both worlds. You know, I lower to the lower frequency and lament all the goings on. Uh, in the country, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. or and then I can absolutely uh, raise my vibration to what you are explaining. So I presume it's a process, it's a journey to get to being able to remain in that higher state and um, you know see from and understand and remain in that perception. It's kind of easy to be dragged down on occasion, depending on who you're with or what's going on, or, you know, it's where the rubber meets the road, as it were. So what would you say to that? Uh, I'm sorry, what, what is your question? Oh, my question is, um, it seems to be a process to get to a stage where one can remain in that higher vibration all the time. Right, right. Yeah, it, it appears to be a process, that's correct. It appears to be a process. So, 
and in this process naturally you go back and forth you know and see you you go from this expansion into contraction yes. you expand especially when you're in a spiritual settings yes. or for me i can only speak of myself I, I i don't know what other people's experiences are because but for me when i was with my sat guru with my teacher and uh there was expansion i was amazing i felt one with god it was beautiful and then the moment i left the satsang house where we were sitting with papaji the mind would come and would drive me crazy and everybody w was annoying me so it, it looked like a constant contraction and expansion so was in that instant was he holding the energy for all his group yeah of course he was but that was that had nothing to do with him it was in him it was my lack of understanding okay because i thought that coming to this place and experiencing this is going to have to affect the other world so when i leave the satsang house the other world must be in harmony with me so that was my perception mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the other world was as hostile or chaotic as it was before yeah I understand. Now, yeah. So now I'm leaving the satsang and I'm expecting it to change. Hmm. I'm projecting that now I'm kind of experiencing some kind of peace. Everything else has to be that way. But what I later on, years after I realized that when I really discovered the true peace within myself, I realized it has nothing to do with the world outside of myself or people around me. They can do whatever they do, which the world, all kinds of things are happening in the world all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, if I depend my happiness based on things being peaceful or not or if i depend my happiness let's say that i meet i meet somebody i like and i want to date them and have a relationship with them if i based my happiness on her being liking me or not liking me or wanting to be with me or not wanting to be with me then i'm in trouble If I based my happiness on who's going to be the next U.S. president, whether there's going to be a pandemic, whether the weather, I like, I like the sun, I like warmth, that's what I like. I like warm weather, I like sunshine. But if I base my happiness on that, then only half of the time I'm happy. The rest of the time, I will be miserable. Is it making any sense for you? Yes, absolutely it is. Absolutely. Right. Is. Yeah. So, so you have to... karmic process, I guess. You so know. exactly how that's exactly it. How, how do I find this inner happiness all the time that's not depending on the outside world? Exactly. By recognizing that your mind your thoughts are objects and they don't have to cooperate with you for you to be happy your emotions your how you feel is another object and that has nothing to do with you being happy or not and definitely your physical body is another object and recognizing that anything that comes and goes 
cannot give you happiness. Anything that's changing. Mm -hmm. The world is changing. The people around you come and go. Weather changes. Politics changes. Mm -hmm. Things changing in life 24-7. Nothing remains the same, no matter what. And recognizing that my thoughts change, my emotions change, and my body changes. So these are all in relative reality. None of them are going to ultimately make me happy. So I have to go, I have to go beyond all of them. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Right. Thank uh, you. That's very helpful. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. So I have to go beyond them. How do I go beyond them? That's another question. And for me, I needed a living teacher. I needed somebody who walked the path to show me how to get there. Somebody else can find it out on their own. I needed someone to show me that. Because Papaji obviously found it. And I wanted what he had. I found this man has discovered peace. I mean, he seemed like a mountain. When I'm sitting in front of him, it was like sitting in the presence of Mount Everest. He was like so huge, so big, and wasn't moving. It was still. He was still was like sometimes I thought if I run into this room with a machine gun and start shooting around is he going to react or if he's going to stay the way he is and I thought nothing can move this guy this guy is really established in the self so he's not moving and I wanted that I knew that he got it I didn't know what, you know, I'd heard all these words, freedom, enlightenment, blah, 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 blah. But they were, they were just words. But what I'm feeling with him is this guy, he's the real deal. He's really still, he's become the Buddha. And he doesn't really give a damn what is going on in the world. He's established in himself and I want that so the next 30 years of my life got dedicated in getting to where he was that's what happened and it was like I'm not gonna stop I can't stop till I get to where he's at because nothing else is going to make me happy and nothing else is comparable to this. This is the real thing. Yeah, we go, you go beyond all of them. Well, what does that mean going beyond all of them? means to recognize we that's why we your, your attention turns inwards so as the attention goes inwards you're cutting through a lot of the bs because you're going in and you're going to discover the real you and what is the real you doing the real you is sitting here and it's just looking It's not making any judgments. It doesn't have any preferences. It's not trying to be somewhere else or someone else. The real you is simply witnessing. It's an eternal witness. The one who's aware. The one who's witnessing. The one who's here. And
And when you do some work on yourself with the right teachings, right pointing out, and you get a glimpse of the real you, and you realize that the real you, when you were five years old, you had the same quality, means the witness was there witnessing this five-year-old boy or five-year-old girl. The sense of I am was there in you when you were five years old. You don't know about spiritual work. You don't know about these, these things. But you're five years old. You certainly know that you are. There's no doubt in your mind that you don't exist. You're 10 years old. You're playing with your friends, your toys. You're playing a game, whatever it is. You know that you are. Nobody needs to come and tell you, Hey, Johnny. Hey, Britta. Hey, Hilde. Hey, you are. You exist. No kidding. I know I am. I don't need anybody to tell me that. Then you get to 12, 13, 14. Your body goes through puberty. So now your body is shifting and changing. It's growing and it's shaping. But the sense of I am, the sense of being, existing, remains the same. Then you're 18, 19 years old. You're going to college or, you know, you're doing what 18, 19 year old, 20 year olds do. What do they do? You know, going to school, da 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 da. The rest of time, you're partying, or you're doing sports, or your your interests change. You're no longer interested in toys. You're interested in boys and girls. Your hormones changed. Now you're taking care of yourself. You want to look good. You want to look cool. You want to look happening. So boys or girls look at you. It's a natural phenomenon is happening. I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's cultural right now. But the sense of I am is still there. This is not an emotion. It's a sense of being. You're in your 30s, whatever. You're thinking about getting married. You're thinking about career. Your sense of I am, sense of being, is still the same. Let's say you get older, maybe you're going through a major heartbreak. Your heart's broken, you're really sad, whatever. Either you lost your love or some accident, something happened. The sense of I am is still remains the same sense of I am as you were five years old. It's still here. That doesn't change. There is still a witness inside you witnessing your emotional ups and downs, witnessing your life, witnessing events. There's a witness there. That witness, is, things get reported to the witness. That remains the same. Then you're starting getting older, your body starts, you know, let's say you're 50, 60, 70 years old. The hair starts getting gray, face starts changing, eyes not seeing as well, body mal malfunction starts to happen. Every day there's a new story. You're getting older. You're aging. You're calmer, you're more mature, you've changed, your personality may be changed, your emotions maybe now. You have some kind of control over your emotions. You're not as fiery as you were. You're wiser. You're more mature. But the sense, and the body is getting older, but the sense of I am, the sense of the, the witness, remains the same witness. It doesn't change. It's not a different witness. It's the same witness it was before. The sense of I am remains the same sense of I am as all of your life. Everything else is changing. Then, you know, let's say you're at your last stage of your life. You're thinking about passing on. You're thinking about writing a will. 
you know, you feel like, okay, I'm coming to an end. Let me finish up the business here on this planet. But the sense of I am remains the same sense of I am as it was before. Nothing changes. The witness is still a witness. You're still witnessing. And you say, oh, I remember I used to look younger. I was stronger. I used to do this. I used to do that. The I am remains the I am. The witness doesn't change. So, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help you to recognize I am, to recognize the witness. And the more your attention goes towards the witness, towards I am, the more you become free the more you get expanded because you're shifting from who you thought you were to who you really are. Who you really are is I am. Not I am this, not I am that. So the more you begin to notice that, in, in other words, your vibration starts to rise to a higher frequency, you're coming to the 5D quantum awareness. You're coming to this other awareness of the I am, not I am this or I am that. And then you start to see you're free and you're happy because your happiness is not depending on circumstances. You're, recognition, you're recognizing the I am. And I am is present, it doesn't have emotions, it doesn't have thoughts, it doesn't have ups and downs. It's free from all of it. And the quality of your life changes extremely. Yet, the outside world remains the outside world. But you're not affected by it because you have a horizon above it. And you're not concerning yourself about the outside world because it's not your business. Don't get involved with the outside world at all. Leave it alone. Doesn't matter what is going on, whether it's righteous or not righteous. Leave the outside world alone. Don't get involved with it. If you want to be free, if you want to suffer, keep going after the outside world. You're doing a good job. Keep, keep, the, keep on the, co the course. It only brings you suffering. That's all it's going to do. It's, not, it's never going to make you free. Very good. I want to thank you all for we've come to the end of our academy time. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, we will be having our next academy next Wednesday, same time. Um, the recording of this academy will be mailed to you. You can uh, find a lot of my uh, uh, videos on my, uh, or pretty much all of them on uh, my YouTube channel. It's Zaratustra 5D. My podcast is Zaratustra 5D, uh, as well as the Facebook and Twitter. Um, we uh, have a couple of events coming. On September 10th, I'm going to have a shamanic healing circle. It's a two-hour event. Uh, you're welcome to register if you want to join me. I will be doing some shamanic healing. It is powerful. Those of you who've been with me before, you know, uh, you have experienced that uh, it's almost as if, or it's very much similar to as if we've been, we are together in the same room. It's powerful energy and it gets transmitted. Uh, followed by a two-day workshop I'm going to have this workshop about 5D quantum awareness, the direct experience. 
what is the direct experience of the fifth dimensional quantum awareness? And in that workshop, uh, that's the aim of the workshop to help you have a direct experience of your fifth dimensional self and tapping into the 5D quantum awareness, giving you the tools and exercises. Um, registration is open. You can go through my website. My website is zaratustra.tv and you go to the programs and you can, to the calendar, click on the event and you can register there. I also uh, have room for two students that I would be taking in the month of September for my uh, VIP TaylorMade uh, program, which is called Life Training Program. Uh, it's a one-on-one -on -one coaching program that I've created this year, and it's to help you for those uh, serious students who want to advance their their process and work on their spirituality and they need one-on-one -on -one help i have room to, uh, to take two students um, so feel free to write to me uh, my uh, email is uh, info at zaratustra.tv and we'll make an appointment for you and then we'll have a consultation and we'll go on from there. Very good. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next week. Much blessings. Namaste.